1203, I call the meeting to order, City of University Heights, Iowa City Council meeting. Today is February 14th, 2023, and the meeting is being conducted on Zoom. Thanks everyone for attending tonight. And um, first is roll call, and for the counselor here, Tim Schroeder is not here tonight. He cannot attend, he is out of state for his work. So uh, four council are present tonight. Then uh, first order of business is approval of minutes January 10th, which were circulated by Mike. Are there any additions or corrections on the January 10th minutes? Hearing none, the minutes are approved by unanimous consent. Public input. Um, are there any members of the public that would like to speak to the council tonight? No comment, Pat Yegi. Okay, thank you, Pat. Okay, I don't see any other public. Do you, Mike? Okay, so we'll go on to finance. So we have discussion of proposed levy rate for FY24 budget, and then we'll have consideration of the resolution. Uh, Steve Cool is here tonight to discuss that, and uh, Bobby's here also. Um, Steve, would you like to start? Sure. Uh, Mike's going to bring up the uh, uh, publication form of the. Okay. There we go. Okay, this is the uh, notice of public hearing for the proposed tax levy for fiscal 24 property taxes. Um, okay, just to briefly explain this and what the information is. Uh, these are the tax levies that are subject to this process here. Uh, we have two debt. We have two debt or two levies that are not subject to it. We have the library twenty-seven cent levy, and then also the debt service levy. Those are not subject to this computation. So we're going to be focusing on the uh, the regular uh, general fund um, and some of the divisions of it, and the. Uh, employee payroll taxes and benefits levies. So in the three columns with the numbers, the left one here, current year certified, this, these are the uh, budget numbers that we're dealing with this year. Um, towards the bottom here, we have a total amount of 875,000 uh, levy rate, $10.00. 31 cents and a fraction above that. Okay, the second column, this is based on what the levy rate would be if we kept the taxes exactly the same, but levied against the new property tax valuation, which has gone from just short of 84,000, that's on the top line, 84,009. 84,920. Um, current year, uh, 90,600,000 plus. So if we were to not increase the taxes, we would be looking at a much lower levy rate. However, on the third column, this is what we're proposing for this year. These are based on the maximum amounts that we can levy based on the regular taxable valuation of 90. $0.6 million, uh, the general levy, not quite $734,000, uh, transit $46,000, uh, liability, uh, property insurance, $10,700, um, and then towards the bottom, uh, the two employee benefits levies, about $143,000 for a grand total of 934,000 of property taxes that we are um, sort of seeking to levy here. Uh, the, the, the rate combined rate on these levies is $10.31.3. So it's very fractional, less than one cent per thousand increase this year. 
the total taxes, this is in the far right hand column, the annual change, 6.71%. That increase in the total taxes is pretty much solely due to the increase in the, the uh, taxable valuation. It jumped from 85 to $90 million. Um, that $5 million bump, I believe, is the final full assessment of the hotel property. So um, we are pretty much at about the peak level on our property taxes. So uh, this, this is the levy proposal for this year. Um, I want to sidetrack just a little bit and talk about one other item that's been in the news lately. Um, uh, in case you have not been aware of it, um, the there's an error. There was an error in computing the rollback last fall, and the rollback is the percentage of the residential value that gets taxed. Um, these taxable valuations, or at least for the 23-24, the $90 million figure was based on a roll back to 56.5% of the assessed value. Uh, the error that was discovered um, means that the rollback should have been 54.6%. So it's almost a 2%. Uh, two percentage points decrease. So what does that mean? Well, what it means right now is uh, there's, there's a, a high prospect that um, somehow one way or another, these levies for fiscal 24 are likely to be adjusted downward either by uh, the Department of Management reissuing the correct taxable valuation numbers, or there will be some adjustment factor. Um, I have not heard or read anything how they're going to do this. Uh, right now, there's a bill in the legislature to correct this mistake. Um, and what is also being considered is extending the budget deadline from March 31st to April 30th. Uh, because of this issue, um, we've read in the newspapers and so forth about uh, Iowa City, Cedar Rapids, larger communities uh, potentially losing over a million dollars of property taxes. Uh, I've talked, looked around, you know, in the area here. Um, some of the, some of the larger Towns probably like in you know population of twenty to twenty five thousand could be losing anywhere from two hundred and fifty to five hundred thousand dollars just depending on the composition of the real estate that they have in town. I don't know how much we're potentially looking at yet for a decrease. I've just tried to compare our taxable values against some of the other cities that I've seen some information for. Um, I, I don't want to make this too definite, but we're probably going to be looking at some kind of a decrease in available property taxes of somewhere in the range of twenty to forty thousand dollars. Yeah, that I I can't determine that. Just it's not simply by taking a number and you know adjusting these numbers. It's all based on each each city's composition of commercial, multifamily housing, residential housing, and so forth. Um, but anyway, there's a, a very high chance that we're going to have to reduce these dollars some. What we're voting on is to approve the levy rate so that in the event that the taxable valuation gets decreased, at least we can keep the same levy rate to you know, reduce, you know, try to minimize the amount of property tax that we're going to lose. Um, <clears throat> I haven't heard anything since the end of last week, but the status is on this. Um, indications are that this is going to pass sometime this week, most likely. 
Um, I guess we'll just kind of have to see, you know, how quick the state is on giving further guidance on how to handle this. But for the task at hand tonight, we need to approve these levy rates. So irregardless of what happens, we lock in at these rates. These are, these are the maximum amounts that we can assess for, you know, the payroll taxes is based on the payroll, um, the insurance is an estimate of the insurance premiums and the transit is based on the Iowa City transit that we've been given for um, next year's budget amount plus uh, an estimated amount for seats. So anyway, that's where we're at tonight. Um, looking forward, I know we have, we'll have the public hearing on approving this levy on March 7th. Also on March 7th, I'm going to have some discussion on the budget, how much it'll be. We'll just have to see what happens here in the next week or two and see what happens on this legislation. Um, we mean, if we, if the um, deadline gets extended till April 30th, we may, obviously it'll give us a little bit time to do a, a little bit more thorough searching through the budget and see what we need to trim, if we need to trim things. So, um, but anyway, tonight we are, um, we need to get this approved. So one way or another, we can be either the March 31st or the April 30th deadline. Um, I also did, uh, I had one other uh, little bit of information here. It's not on this form. Um, but I've combined all of the tax levy rates, including the debt service and the library. Um, in fiscal 23, the grand total of those levies was just a shade short of $11.75 per thousand. For fiscal 24, uh, we're looking at um, a maximum combined levy rate of just a hair over $11.69. So it's about a six cent reduction. Um, what that is attributable to is it's on the debt service. Um, we have three bonds that are covered either in full or in part by the general fund levy, the 2016, 17, and 18 bonds. Uh, the amount of debt service required is going to be right at around $126,000 for next year, which is about almost the same as this year. Mm -hmm. So when we when we put $126,000 against $84 million and $90 million, we have a slightly lower rate. So we're, we're able to spread out that debt service cost over more dollars. So, so we're looking at potentially... Uh, some decrease in the total property tax levy one way or another. Okay, any questions for Steve? Steve, I really appreciate you have a lot of good connections with the state in talking to them and with uh, other cities in uh, tracking this all. I appreciate all your work in that. I know you've done a lot with that. And so tonight is a, is uh, the maximum uh, property tax dollars because we can't, once it's published, it can't go higher, but it most likely will be lower. Is that right, Steve? Yes, that's correct. Okay, any, any questions for Steve Cool? We have consideration of resolution number 2306, setting a public hearing for 7 p.m. March 7, 2023, on the proposed city maximum property tax dollars and levy for the fiscal year 2023-2024 budget. Is there a motion? I'll motion. Motion by, was that? Bobby. Bobby, thank, I'm sorry. Yes, thank you, Bobby. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, second by Lisa. Okay, um, discussion. Roll call vote. John? 
Aye. Moore? Aye. Schroeder absent. Scott? Aye. Swales? Aye. Motion carries 4-0 with one absent. Thank you. Uh, Steve, do you want to hang on a little bit or do you have to leave? Um, I was planning to leave unless you had something that you wanted me to stay on for. Uh, I, I just wondered if you wanted to stay on when we, because you were part of the meeting with John Brown, if anyone had questions. Oh, we'll, yeah, we'll, I, I could stay on for a little bit. Okay, thank you. Um, one thing I did want to mention, um, Mike, I'll, I'll get a hold of you sometime later this week uh, with, uh, an, I'm going to e re-email this uh, PDF to you to send on to the Press Citizen for Publishing and we'll pick out a publication date. It'll have to be published by the end of next week, so. Okay. I'll work that, with you on that. Yeah, Gannett's good on that. As uh, Whenever I give them, you know, has to be by this date, they're always good with it. So that'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to go to, uh, instead of 2305, I'll go to resolution 2303, appointing John Brown to be city treasurer with compensation of $35 per hour beginning as determined by the finance chair and mayor in consultation with retiring treasurer Lori Kamara. I'll speak about Lori during the treasurer's report, but for now, I want to talk a little bit about um, recommending John Brown. And as I said to the council, after an extensive search uh, with uh, Johnson County cities, we were fortunate to find a qualified person for our city treasurer living in University Heights. And that's John Brown, who's here tonight. He's a senior finance tax and business professional with his own business. Um, I, I first had an interview with the staff and myself with uh, Mike Haverkamp and uh, of course, Lori Kamara and the chief Troy, um, because I don't know, I hear noise, but at, we had that first meeting at, to get to know each other. And then um, John Brown sent, updated his CV. And uh, I sent that to Bobby, the finance chair, of course, as you know, and Steve Cool and I then met with uh, John Brown for a second interview. And that's when we, um, the, the committee of those three, we discussed with John his salary. He normally makes a higher bookkeeping fee than that, but he said because he lives in University Heights, he would, he would uh, uh, do it for less. And uh, we also discussed with him taking over the duties of Steve's cool job within the next two years. And um, I went ahead and sent that with the CV to the city council. And I, I just wondered if anyone on the committees that we would wanna say anything or comments, make any additional comments because we recommend hiring John Brown. I mean, I, I think we're fortunate to have John as an option and especially someone who lives in University Heights. I think that's great. John seems like he's overqualified and in, in a good way and we're excited to have him. Um, from my perspective, I'm nothing but excitement. So assuming everyone votes him in, votes him in we're excited to have you, John. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't want to put you on the spot, John, but maybe somebody would like, would you like to say a couple words or anything to the council? Yes, I mean, well, well, thank you for the uh, consideration and, and, and for the offer. Uh, I like being involved in the community. And yes, I, I, I think for me, this is a great opportunity. I mean, you, you can sing my praise and what have you, but uh, I think this is a great opportunity for me to the community and at least for the next month or so, you know, I'll work hand in hand with my neighbor, Lori, <laughs> you know, and transitioning over. 
I I didn't mention him. I mean, I previously held uh, senior accountant uh, positions at two different Fortune 500 companies. I've done a lot of you know uh, tax exempt work, but most of his, most of his government related, you know, the defense industry, the Department of Defense. But uh, I don't know much about. You know, I never worked for a municipality before, but uh, I think with your guidance and your patience, I can quickly pick it up. Very good. Uh, this is a this is an you know a, a city treasurer. There's a lot of steps to it, and we want to make sure that uh, John is comfortable and Lori has been gracious enough to say she'd like to make sure that John's up to speed uh, with, uh, with every, all the duties. And so she's willing to stay along and, and assist with that. We really appreciate that uh, to make this a smooth transition. Uh, I'm going to have Mike, when the, if, when the council approves this, I'm going to have Mike contact uh, some of the, all the banks with the CDs and of course, Midwest One, and we'll start the process of signing the paperwork. And then when John's comfortable and Lori's comfortable with John doing that, we'll turn in the paperwork um, and get that done. It's a little, it's a little more complicated. So, um, I have um, consideration of which ordinance is it? It's 2303 is before the council. Is there a motion? A motion. Motion by Bobby. Is there a second? I'll second. And second by Lisa. Discussion. Roll call vote. Moore? Aye. Schroeder is absent. Scott? Aye. Swales? Aye. Gone? Aye. Motion carries 4-0 with one absent. Welcome aboard, John. Thank you, John. Uh, Operation of resolution 2305, confirming mayor's appointments to city tree board. And I want to have special thanks to Lisa Haverkamp, who has been working on the tree board. And I asked her if she had some recommendations. And uh, within like a day, she came back to me and said, yes, I have two recommendations. And uh, one is Bonnie Pino. Uh, she lives in the OUP and she's a master gardener. I know Bonnie. She is a great person for the tree board and would love to work on it. And then the second one is Dave Conrads, who lives on Kozer. I don't know Dave, but I'm told he works for the Raptor Club and that will be a great benefit in helping with the um, tree board. So those are the two recommendations for the uh, appointment. So consideration of resolution 2305 is before you. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. Okay, motion by Doug. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Stephanie. Okay, uh, discussion. Roll call vote. Uh, Scott. Sorry, I <laughs> Swales. Aye. Gone? Aye. Uh, Moore? Aye. Schroeder absent. Motion carries 4-0 with one absent. Very good. Thank you. And then uh, we'll go down to city attorney legal report. And Steve sent out the resolutions. And did you have anything further, Steve? Nope. Okay. Any questions for Steve? Okay, uh, we'll go to the clerk report. Mike, you sent around a clerk report. Any questions for Mike? Any comments you want to make, Mike? The uh, only thing I wanted to say, I did drop off those plans for the Horn School edition. Terry Gert reminded me those 
those are just the site plans. That isn't anything to do with the uh, with the renovation it, itself. And and Tim Tim's the one who would have caught that error, and he's not here. So <laughs> um, the, the the review of those plans are ongoing, and it it is a it'll be a a big project. But um, we're, now's a good we're time certainly being kept yeah. up to date by by the school district, and that's that's. To everyone's you know, benefit. And, and you know, uh, council knows that we have a meeting scheduled with the school board, part of the school board about the local option sales tax that they want to talk to the council, each council about, about putting that on the ballot in November. And they'll discuss that next Tuesday, February 21st on Zoom at 7 p.m. And I asked them to also do a brief presentation about the um what they're doing at horn school renovation good at that time and uh so make sure that's on your calendar for next week anything else mike i think no. that's thank you then we'll go to city treasury report Lori. i don't know this might be your last city treasury report 19 years you know Lauren, i think it is <laughs> maybe we'll see how you you get oh my goodness well we've been talking many times since you let us know you were retiring after 19 years and we were reminiscing and i said Lori, yeah i remember the birth of every one of your children <laughs> your three children i thought oh yeah. my goodness and then you commented they don't know me any different than the city treasurer. Their whole they don't. I've, I've been doing this their whole lives. So I've never had just one job. So they might get tired of me being here more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, isn't that something? And, you know, all those 19 years, you think of, I mean, everybody likes to go back to some five-hour meeting and some, <laughs> a lot of highs and lows and goods and bads and thick and mm -hmm. thin. Um, Lori, I, I have a little something from the keepsake from the city staff and the city council and myself. This is our, it's our little certificate of appreciation under plexiglass with the <laughs> new logo ah. and done by my husband, who's quite my secretary here. And it says, please. Certificate of Appreciation presented to Maury Kamira for her 19 years of outstanding service at a city treasurer. So thank okay. it's just a little token to keep on your desk, Lori, and think of us. And I know you said <laughs> that maybe you'd attend some of the meetings still because you like being tuned in. I like I like knowing what's going on. Yeah. So that's great. So we're, you're really going to be missed, Lori, but I know you'll be around. I will and we know where back. you live. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah. So Mike, you said you wanted to say something tonight. Oh, I just, I just wanted to say on behalf of staff, as well as my time on council, you have been such a resource and so steady and so accommodating to all of us in, in the city. We are just so incredibly grateful that to have had your service behind us and, and how much that was, what a great help that was. So, you know, the whole, the whole Zoom thing of clapping is, you know, waving your hands <laughs> like this and uh, you certainly, you certainly deserve it. You certainly deserve it, Lori. So. Steve, you said you wanted to say a few words. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I, uh, well, I can't believe it. Steve, I mean, is that okay. what you said? I said Did chief. Oh, Chief. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, and then I'm, sorry. Never... I'm sorry. I thought you said Steve also. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm sorry. When, uh, when I think about when I came here in 2019, I mean, Lori, you, and the mayor, and and the city attorney are, are the people that were here when I arrived and the people that helped me in that transition. And of everybody, I think it's a flip of the coin, whether it's you or the mayor, I deal with more often. But 
<laughs> I, I definitely will miss you. I appreciate you always being super responsive and helping me out when I need things. And I, and I hope I've been there for you and in, in the short time yes. that I've been here, but, but congratulations, well-deserved and good luck in the future. Thank you. <laughs> I guess it's Steve's turn now. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's all right. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah. I, I can't believe it's only been 19 years, Lori. Um, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, I don't, I can't, I, this is, I'm almost uh, dumbstruck, which doesn't happen to me very often. And, <laughs> and I'll, I'll, I'll get through it. I'll think of something to say here. No, I, the thing I want to say is that um, as everyone on this, this Zoom meeting knows, uh, everyone, uh, Pat Yagi included, who's not on the council now and not the clerk now, but she has been, and everyone knows that the city uh, runs on the efforts, um, many of them underappreciated, most of them underpaid, of, of various uh, people in the community who step forward to uh, to run for office and and uh, take the heat and uh, and maybe get a pat on the back once in a while. And, and uh, I think everyone does know that. I, I hope the community knows that. And I think the community does know that in its own way. But within that group of people that, uh, that helps make the city run on a year to year basis, you know, there are those people that make the, make the, the, the council and the, and the, the staff uh, run and put them in a position to, to really help the broader community and, by golly, I, I don't even have any idea how how we would have done anything without you. Um, I just I'm going to miss you so much, and uh, it's such yeah. it's such a joy to have you. And um, I I hope you're not a stranger, but we I do understand that the change is uh, change is part of the plan sometimes, and 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 wish you and your family everything uh, in, in the best way. Thank you. I'm not going to be a stranger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still here. But thank you, everybody. Thank you. Um, so, Lori, uh, we have, uh, I see you added another warrant at about five o'clock or so. Yeah, you might just removal. mention it. Um, I have to look at my I think it was $2,100 for a tree yeah. removal. Is that what you said? Yeah. Yep. Trillium something. Oh, yes. Um, okay. Right. Okay. So. Trillium um, Woodworks. Yep. Oh. Okay. Did it list tonight? Okay. Uh, so that on top of the list that Lori sent, are there any. Uh, any objection to paying those warrants? When we do it this time, you know, we kind of had a system because you some, you know, maybe at your house or John's or whatever you want to figure out this, this, uh, this billing cycle, however, you and and John the next meeting, you said there's two more meetings. Um, if we need to approve any, if the visa bill, I can track it down. Whatever other things need to be paid. Um, okay, John can get a slow start on things and. Since he's not even a signer on the account yet, I mean, we'll get it figured out. Okay, I know you will. Thank you again. Mm -hmm. Any other questions about um, a treasurer's report by council? Okay, we'll uh, thank you, Steve, for uh, Steve Cool for staying, but you can you can be off if you'd like. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, we'll go down to um, police chief report. And uh, chief, you sent around um, your uh, written report. Uh, do you have any other comments or? There's, uh, 
it, unless somebody has any questions about what I wrote, I just asked uh, a media event at the Johnson County Ambulance Service. And this is, if you all recall, Fiona Johnson from the Ambulance Service presented. Uh, University Heights agreed to be part of, of that effort. Uh, the Iowa City area is now one of four communities in the nation that has this designation. While I was down at the ambulance service, I picked up our enclosure and our AD. Uh, I will work, uh, I'll touch base with the mayor, but also Josiah about where exactly to mount that. I'm thinking the traffic control box, possibly down at Melrose and Coser. That's the area that we discussed. It, there's already power run to that box. So I think it would just be a, a matter of installing it as opposed to running a new line. Uh, we are going to be doing work down there both on that box and uh, Melrose and Sunset uh, to aid in traffic control. And that, that's in my report too. I felt comfortable after talking with Josiah to move that work forward. It's it's work that needed to, end to keep the light at Coser and Melrose functional. And uh, I confirmed with University of Iowa that they will pay for the work at Melrose and Sunset. So both of those projects are moving forward. And then finally, uh, I don't remember if it was last meetings or two meetings ago, but the mayor put together an ad hoc committee uh, consisting of uh, Councillor Gaughan and Councillor Scott and I to look into traffic cameras and traffic enforcement for a variety of reasons. I met with a vendor this last week and I failed to put that on my report and he left me some materials. Uh, Councillor Gaughan, Councillor Scott and I have a meeting scheduled for March 2nd uh, in the morning to go over a few details of my budget submission and I was hoping at that same time that I could review the materials I learned with them. So that is also moving forward. And I, the more I learn about it, the more I actually think that that's a good fit for our community and I'm excited about it, but, but I'll share that information with them and they can move it forward if they choose to. Are there any questions for the chief? Any questions about his report? Any comments? Um, okay. Um, Steph, did you have anything to add? Nope. Okay, we'll go on to uh, the engineer's report and committee report. And Josiah, you sent a written report around explaining uh, resolution 2304. Uh, yep. You and Ryan, who would like to talk? Uh, I'll, I'll take it. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll hit 2304. That's our Resolution for consideration tonight. Um, just I'll hit a couple items here on the engineer report. I noted that MetroNet was issued their second of their three permits uh, for their fiber build out uh, last week. Um, touch base on the Finkbine golf course, the Finkbine development. We have not received any additional information on that development. So there's been no uh, no movement really to speak of for some months now. Um, so nothing, nothing new there on our, on our end or theirs. Uh, Melrose Complete Street, uh, follow up from last month. Um, sort of the survey was done. We're still working with utilities. Utilities are notoriously difficult to get them to get out there and mark where things are. So that's still on our list to get done. Um, and then the other, the other aspect of this is, is the property boundary research. Um, it's really important to know where the city's right of way is and where the property corners are of the adjacent homes and businesses. And uh, sometimes that takes some time and, and particularly in older neighborhoods like this one, um, there was a bit of trying to piece together lots of old plats and you know searching the county recorder files and and uh, so the bottom line is uh, we, we did work through that and feel like we're pretty comfortable we've got everything laid out now um, that's going to inform us as we start doing our our initial layout here of this project to see what those impacts will be and which properties will be impacted by uh, uh, the planned work and utility relocations and 
So I don't have any answers on that, but that, you know, when you think about what are the steps we're going through to hit each piece, that's where we're at. I think Mike mentioned Horn Elementary. Yeah, so we are reviewing that. We're assisting um, Terry Gert with reviewing that site plan. Um, and then Troy just spoke about the uh, replacing the switch mechanism at the traffic signal at Kozier. So that uh, that is good to go. Um, we did have some signs that got hit this winter. Uh, Russ has those signs now to replace those by the median up by uh, the police police station. And for next month, just as an FYI, um, we'll be looking at getting quotes for street sweeping for this year uh, for council action at next month's meeting. So, yeah, so the resolution we have tonight is, um, and, and I provided a bit of background there in the engineering report, basically that every two years, the MPO receives applications from the, the communities in the Johnson County planning organization or the uh, urban, urban bore in the urban area. So we are planning to submit a, an updated request for funding to continue uh, what, what they would, or they call preventative maintenance work on Sunset Street. And I guess even to back up a step um, for those that are newer, the only streets that you can apply for federal funding for are your arterial streets in town. And so in University Heights, that, that only applies to Melrose and Sunset Street. Uh, two years ago, we submitted a similar, what, would, what I'm kind of thinking of as the first initial or phase one of preventative maintenance on Sunset Street um, to address, you know, a handful of curb ramps um, that need to be updated to be made ADA compliant um, and a handful of street panels. Uh, I think it was an estimate of like 30 to 40 panels. Um, and that was awarded some funding. Um, and so this time we're gonna re-up that uh, to do what, what I'm calling like phase two, to do another uh, couple of curb ramps and another 30 or 40 panels, um, basically to speak to you know the, the preventative maintenance definition of, of staying on top of uh, the, the panel conditions and just the fact that they deteriorate over time. The other thing I wanted to point out was um, in, in my in my report, the money you know the the funding for this is selected, but the funding money is not really available for like four years at the earliest. So, um, you know, the point of getting these submitted and in particular like with sunset here, you know, four years out and multiple rounds is just to keep a consistent um, pattern of receiving funding and staying on top of the repairs. So. The earliest the funding would be available for construction for the, the previous one we were awarded in 2021 would be 2025. And the other thing I wanna say about that is um, once you're awarded funding for a project, the MPO says, you know, that's the earliest date it's available. And then typically you've got like a three year window that they want you to use that money. So, you know, it's four to five to six to seven years out that we're trying to trying to stay on top of. That brings me to uh, the resolution. So each application needs to be submitted with um, an endorsement by the city, to, you know, to confirm that, you know, the city's actually in favor of the project and, and understands what it is and will take care of it. Um, and University Heights for all the projects we've submitted in the past, that's always been a, a resolution. So I prepared a resolution, uh, 2304, that is pretty basic in its wording. It comes right from the application, um, just to say that the city is aware they're uh, okay with uh, preventing the maintenance and sidewalk and panel repairs on Sunset. Okay, so consideration of resolution now. Number 2304 is before the council. Oh, and, and, I, and I do um, have something to add to that uh, you if, do. There's, if there's no other questions. Um, so what I'd like to add, and, and I think I can do this, um, and, I, and I can share my screen. I actually have a, 
an edited version of 2304 that I'd like to propose for your consideration. And this comes from uh, some back and forth I had with the MPO staff. Um, you know, we have Sunset and we have Melrose, okay? Um, my questions to them were about, you know, both streets and how do we know which one will need it the most in four or five years? And uh, do we have to handle the streets separately? And the feedback I got was that, you know, you could, you could change the name of the project to, for example, Sunset Street and Melrose Avenue preventative maintenance. Um, so I'm going to try and share my screen, Mike. If you're okay with that. Yes. If if you can't get it, let me know because I can share as well. I have it pulled up. Okay. I think I have it. Uh, there you, you go. guys can let me know if you see it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. So assuming I'm not uh, stepping all over our attorney's toes, my suggestion would be, if we can, I would uh, propose this revised resolution to just say Sunset Street and Melrose Avenue. And again, the reason I would say that is because um, we, so we sort of keep track of all the panels on Sunset and Melrose every you know two years, roughly, and try and keep an update status of good, fair, and poor panels. And I guess this, in my mind, would provide us flexibility four years from now. We, we may want to say, well, yeah, there's some bad panels on Sunset that we should really take care of based on our, on our uh, you know, recurring observation and, and tracking of that. But there may be some numbers um, Dude, talking to MPO staff, this would provide us the flexibility to to have that option. So, okay. So, is this okay, Steve, for this amend resolution twenty three? Yeah, I'm fine with Are it as long as the council understands that? the changes. You know, uh, you can just vote on twenty three oh four, and you know, in the form. Uh, with including the revisions and, and Josiah can just, or, or I can, or somebody can just finalize those in the version that was, uh, that will be signed. So the, the point would be that the motion or the, the proposal before the council or resolution would be as amended and shown on the shared screen screen right now. It's fine with me. Okay. Any questions for Josiah? So this amended resolution number 23, 304 on the screen now is what's um, before the council. Is there a motion? A motion. Motion by Stephanie. Is there a second? I'll second, second it. Second by Doug. Um, discussion. Roll call vote. Swales. Aye. Thank you. Gone. Aye. Moore. Aye. Schroeder absent. Scott. Aye. Motion carries 4 0 with one absent. Thank you. And thank you for uh, checking with MPOs because I think that's wonderful to include both streets. Yeah. I, I, like that. Yep, I agree. Thank you, Josiah. So uh, I don't have anything else to share. I'll stop sharing my screen, Mike, and uh, I'll get you an updated version sure. of this um, to match what's what you're looking at. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Josiah, is this, is this this year's budget or, or next year that's being proposed? Oh, it's it's a project for from the MPO that's for like 26, 20, it's four or oh, five okay. years down, get funding for. Okay. We down. have so many different line items. They in do. Capital projects. Sunset, Marietta, ADA stuff. Yeah. I just wasn't sure. Yeah, okay. that, that's correct. This is a, a request for consideration of funding for a project that would be down the road. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? 
Okay, very good. Thank you, um, Josiah. And uh, Ryan, I'll get that um, signature ready for the MS4 report you need to be working on to okay. you. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. And um, let's see. Then we have building zoning and sanitation. And Steve, why don't you give a little update on zoning a little bit because Tim's not here and the zoning commission had met. You bet. Thank you. Uh, the zoning commission did meet at the direction of the council. Uh, we kind of have had an introductory meeting to sort of go over some of the issues that the council had discussed last fall based on certain issues that came up before the board of adjustment, some other issues that had just come up, I guess, by uh, community members uh, asking questions and, and, and I think council members, uh, there were several, uh, several council meetings where uh, there was discussion about, you know, some of, the, some of these issues, I'm being pretty vague here, but the, the decision was to try to get some input from the, from the zoning commission. And when that decision was made, I think it was probably in November and the holidays were upon us. And so we, we pushed that. Uh, we, the, the commission did meet, um, it met a couple of weeks ago and uh, uh, is scheduled to meet again. It was going to meet, um, I guess this week, tomorrow. But uh, I think between some scheduling uh, on, on my part and I think some scheduling on the, on the basketball team's part, um, I think that, <laughs> that, that, meeting, that meeting got postponed. So the plan now is to meet this, this Monday, the 20th, uh, at 7 o'clock to, to kind of continue uh, a discussion. So I don't have any, anything formal or final, certainly, to report back, but things are, things are in progress. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Um, E-government, Lisa, you sent around your report. Did you have any additional comments? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, any comments for, or questions for Lisa? Okay. Okay, we'll uh, move on now. As I told you, the next meeting is Tuesday, February 21st, and it was at was going to be a work session, but I want to make it a special meeting in case we have a, a a bill that needs to be paid or something. And this is with the school board. So not all staff has to attend, but interested residents may want to attend this um, also. And then the meeting after that, of course, is the Tuesday, March 7th public hearing at 7 p.m. And then the regular meeting is March 14th, the regular council meeting. And then the right now, March 28th, is that right, Mike, is the last meeting if uh, to uh, finish up with the budget. Right. And But that could change depending on what we find out from the state. So are there any other announcements? Is there any objection to adjournment? Hearing none, the meeting's adjourned by unanimous consent. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Enjoy Goodbye. what's left of it. <laughs>